What's going on you guys, Fullsteer, and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm gonna redo my Graves Guide. Like, with the lethality changes, some, so, quite some things have changed again. So, yeah, let's get right into the runes. This is the rune page I use on Graves now. I go for lethality reds, um, then four flat armor, then scaling health there. And then take flat attack speed in quints and blues, giving me these stats. The reason I go for this page is because attack speed just helps you out massively when clearing in the early game. Plus, if you're going for the new build, like the lethality type of build, having a lot of extra attack speed is really going to help you out as well. Because you're not building a Phantom Dancer in that case, so that really helps. Then lethality, obviously. Lethality is pretty pretty OP stat right now. And then just, yeah, the yellows don't really matter. I like to take a couple of armor ones to be a little bit more tanky early. And then some scaling health to scale up. Now, for the Masteries, this is the Mastery page I go for on Graves. I take here some attack speed. Again, extra attack speed is really useful in this lethality build because you're missing out on a lot of attack speed items if you're going for this. So that's why I take Fury. Also, if you're going for the other build still, then Fury is also still very useful. So it's fine either way. I take Fresh Blood just to get a little bit of extra basic attack damage. You don't need any, like, sustain. So this is pretty useless. Then I take one point in this for a little bit of extra sustain and then this for some flat extra damage. And then I take usually take double-edged sword, but if you're like scaling a bit more, then Bounty Hunter is also an option. This is more of early game damage. Now, Savage Tree, just increase your basic attack damage. I want this because I want my red boss for longer, mainly just my boss for longer in general. Blue and red are both great on graves, so that's why I usually take that. Then Merciless for a bit of increased damage. Green Father's Gift for increased damage on your jungle clear as well as just overall damage on champions. Then I take Precision for extra lethality again. And then I take Thunder Lords for the extra burst damage. Then for the items on Graves, I go for a Hunter's Machete start with a refillable potion. Usually you donate these refillable potions, maybe one to full clear your jungle. Like it's really easy on Graves as you kite your camps. So after that, then... The item I will rush for is this one. The Red Smite Warrior Enchant. It gives you a lot of extra damage. 60 AD, 10% CDR, and the Red Smite effect. Now, you can be uh, buy in multiple be uh, multiple ways. Like, uh, also boots also go into this, actually. If you're back with, like, a thousand golds, you can buy, like, double longsword boots. You can also buy the Red Smite with, like, a longsword. That also works. It's usually what I do. Because I like to have the Red Smite effect on Graves to duel people. Because... Yeah, it, it's more useful if you find people in the early game and you just red smite them. So I tend to pick up the red smite effect like pretty quick. Unless I back with like 700 gold, then I tend to pick up double longsword because that helps a bit more. But if I have more gold and can buy an extra longsword, I will usually pick that up. You just rush this and then these boots, they, t they turn into... Well, either these, like Berserker Greaves, or just tank boots. Because I'm gonna also explain you the other build. It's a build you can do if you need to be a bit more frontline-y on Graves. But yeah, let's, the lethality build's up first. So this is going to be the lethality build section. You get these boots. These boots are key on this lethality build because of the fact that you need the attack speed. You need the extra attack speed in this build. It's very necessary. So now let's get into the lethality build. It's pretty much Ghost Blade right here. It's your first rush item. This is probably the best of the lethality items, I'd say, on Graves. It gives you a lot of extra movement speed as well on the active 60 AD and damage just overall lethality as well now after ghost blade you usually rush an edge of night the uh, active from edge of night is very useful give you a shield when you're trying to like engage on people so they can't hit you with a certain spell quick interruption there sorry my bad uh so i was at like the edge of night you take the edge of night for the ad and magic resist and lethality and then usually after this like a dusk blade is a pretty good option and then an item i like to get in between as well is the um what's it called Death's Dance. This is a very solid item in this build. I usually tend to pick it up before the Dusk Blade, though, if I'm going to go for this. Because this damage increase, like the, the lifesteal you get from this, is going to be very useful. As well as just extra flat AD. Dusk Blade is more of like a last item that you can pick up. not necessary. I might not end up going with this. I might switch that for a GA, depending. Or maybe a Phantom Dancer, even. Like, there's a lot of items you can switch this out with. But after these two lethality items, you already have a lot of... A lot of lethality and a lot of extra burst damage. It, getting this extra lifesteal from Death's Dance is really going to help you out. So that's pretty much the lethality build. Then for the other build, like a bit more tanky of a Graves build, it's going to be this one with Ninja Tabis or Mercs. Like either or, it depends on the enemy team comp. But let's say it's this time it's Ninja Tabis. 
Then after this, you go for a Phantom Dancer as a first item. Pick it up quick, gives you a lot of dueling potential in general. And this is why you don't need Berserker Greaves in this build, because Phantom Dancer. Then after that, you have a couple of options. You can pick up a Maw if you need Magic Resist items at this point. You all can also, if you don't need Magic Resist, you can also pick up a Cleaver right here for some extra Armor Pen and CDR. Also very useful. So if you're against Magic Damage, pick up a Maw. If you're not, then pick a Cleaver. This is more like a full AD type of item. So yeah, let's say you go, generally you go Ma. Wait, let's say you go Ma here. Then after Ma, you want to pick up again a Death's Dance. This item is really good on Graves to sustain you in fights. So with this, you go with Death's Dance again. And then you usually end this build in like a, you can end it in like a Lost Whisper. One of the Lost Whispers, which is like the, the, the Lord Dominix if you're against more tanky shit. Or the Mortal Reminder if you're against more squishy shit. So that's an option. As a final item, but you can also use the final item in the form of like a guardian angel, which can be situational, or like a mercurial scimitar if you need CC removal. So there are a, couple, a lot of options in that slot, but this is usually what my full build looks like on the more tanky graves. This graves will never die, generally, like unless you really fuck up somewhere. This graves can tank out a lot of shit, especially if your maw active, uh, your life grip active uh, gets going because you get even more life steal then so you're literally just gonna auto attack and life steal for like 500 per auto attack it's pretty crazy but yeah this is the new graves build so let's get right into the gameplay now welcome to the gameplay section of this guide we'll be using the spectator mode again this time the last time i used it was quite a little while ago but it seemed to go down pretty well the only thing was i needed to slow it down a bit more and now i actually have like I can actually see the item build. I didn't know how to do that last time, so people told me. That's pretty good. Alright, anyway, um, playing Graves against Lee Sin. Like this, uh, usually on Graves you want to full clear your jungle. But against the Lee Sin, that is kind of hard to do because... Like Lee Sin usually does like three camps, which is... Uh, or like maybe four camps, maybe. Like usually three, which is his Red Wolves Blue or Red Blue Gromp. Something like that, but usually Red Wolves Blue and then Gang's top lane. That being, keeping that in mind this game, I actually did a pretty quick clear myself. Because I did the blue gromp red, I do believe. And then went to counter gank to Lee Sin on top lane because I thought that Lee Sin was going to be top lane. Alright, let me slow this clear down here. You need to be paying attention to how I clear it with Graves here. Because I am using my passive stacks the best I can to keep them up. To make me a little bit more tanky. You can see the number there, uh, like in the core, like... Like the left be be beneath brand, you see like a uh, a counter going there. It's on three right now. I I fucked up there actually. I think I shouldn't have eat. If I yeah, fuck my life. I shouldn't have eat. That was really bad. If I didn't eat there, I would have been able to get through the next camp without it. But yeah, just try to keep that up. There's it, there's a better way to clear with graves than this. I took a lot of damage here. This uh, this time I fucked up. But here, what I predicted, Lee Sin was going to be top lane, so I'm going top lane right now. There we go, killed Lee Sin for free, Fiora played that pretty well. Made it Lee Sin down, I just walked top lane and kill him. Nullis is staying for some reason here, I'm not sure why, he engages on the Fiora and he dies as well. So I get a free double kill in the early game, which is really, really good. Now, again, just clearing simply here. Some quick uh, jungle clearing. After this, I probably recall. I have, like, a lot of gold. Let me see. Yeah, 1,300 gold at that moment. Wait, 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 wait. One second. Yeah, I'm back with 1,330 gold, which is going to be a Red Smite with Double Long Sword is what I'm going to buy this here, I think. One Long Sword. Interesting. Oh, wait. I probably... Yeah, see, the Double Long Sword comes out there. I was about to say, I think my math was correct there, but I needed to wait for a little bit of gold. Now, speed it up again a little bit. I need to just go back to farming here, I think. Look towards the gank on bot lane, I believe. Because they're pushing. Lee Sin is right there. I spotted him right here. I went over the wall with the blast cone and I saw the Brand. Brand flashed the Q damage there, so he survived. Like, I'm not sure if Jin had anything up. I can actually check that. Wait, let me go back in just a sec. Go to Jin. He has 11 seconds on his W here. Let's wait for it. Alright, he didn't have his W up, then it's fine. He didn't have a flash either, so that's not much he could have done. 
I was expecting him to have his W up to snare the brand. Maybe I get, get an auto attack there, but in the end I fucked up because I didn't know it was on cooldown. I know that now, which, yeah. I didn't know that then. Alright, waiting for me to respawn here. At this point, I'm just gonna go simply back to clearing, I do believe. Right, let me speed it up a tiny bit again. Yeah, going back to clearing, I nearly have enough gold for my jungle item. Which I think I just clear camps here and back for my jungle item quite soon. Let's see what I do. Uh, looks like Top got ganked. I, like Top got ganked and I thought maybe some of his camps might be up so I just walk into his jungle. To get some extra clearing there. Miss Lee Sin, go up to the double golems here, clear that. Make sure you just keep farming on the graves. Like I'm out farming that Lee Sin pretty heavily as you can see right there. Right, I'm back here, I do think I buy some regular boots with... I don't actually know. I had... Wait, that was wrong. My math was wrong. I uh, needed 925 gold for the jungle item, which I bought. I pretty much had 925 gold there, so... Went out to be perfect. Alright, let me slow this down again. Wait, whoa. A tiny... Just a tiny bit back. Alright, this is where I see bot lane here. Like, this fight's gonna break out, so I see that. I'm gonna be on my way there. And then here, like, this fight... Can I... Let's hide this. Alright, it's just fighting here, just auto-attacking, peeling back a little bit. Lee Sin engages on him. I just keep auto-attacking. I'm very far ahead of them right now, so I pretty much triple killed them here for free, I do believe. Fior teleports, which is good. Wasn't necessary, I think I had that, but the teleport doesn't mind, like, it's no matter. She gets a kill out of it, it's pretty good. Alright, let's speed it up a tiny bit again. I'm just gonna go back to full clearing my jungle, I believe. Because keep clearing on graves is pretty important. I'm walking around with a thousand gold, so my next back is gonna be pretty decent. Oh wait, yeah, right. Um, jump back a little bit. Here, I was like, oh, I think I can kill this Corky. But what I didn't, like, take into account is that the fact that this package was gonna deal this much damage to me. Like, that package fucking hurt. So I was like, oh, shit. Actually, I couldn't kill him. I missed, like, an auto attack worth of damage on him to kill him there. But, yeah, I just underestimated his package damage was kind of bad of me. Let's uh, speed it up again until I'm back alive. There we go. Now... My red buff is still up. I pinged my team to go to the check the red buff because Lee Sin could go there after Corky spotted it was still up. Which looks like he was planning on it, but since my team showed up, uh, they saved my red buff, which is very nice. I clear this, just some quick jungle clearing. Let's slow this down here, see what I do. Tiny bit. Alright, looking for a gank on the Corky here. It's probably not gonna happen. I didn't have anything else to do, like top lane wasn't a gank, so I just could, might as well try to walk through mid lane and get like a cheeky gank off or something. Let's see, he misses his Q. I, I used the uh, smoke screen on myself because I assumed he was going to hit the Q. So that was kind of, yeah, like it was also kind of a slow reaction speed TBH, but yeah. Right, Lee Sin is apparently waiting for me to brush. Let's see. I go clear of that to see if Lee Sin walks anywhere there. Or right, he hits the Q on me. Let's speed this up, this is kind of being, uh... Alright, Grom just respawned, Wolves just respawned, just kind of clear those camps. Like, a fight breaks out on bot lane here. So, yeah. I am I think I can easily double kill them right here. That's what I thought. The only thing is, Brand still has his exhaust up. And that's the only thing that prevented me from actually double killing them. I could have maybe chased that Brand down. But I wasn't... Like, the Cork, uh, the Korkma was still full HP. And the Cork, he could have roamed down to the Brand. Which would have, uh, like, ended in my death. So, I was only... Like, I was just satisfied with killing the Lee Sin and just walking out of that alive. Right, after that, I just go back to clearing. I have 1200 gold right now. Like, I'm going for the Phantom Dancer build this game. Um, the reason I go for this build is because we don't have a tank. We have a Fiora top lane, and the rest of our team is also very squishy. So if you're going for a more durable Graves build, so the Phantom Dancer with Death's Dance Ma build on Graves this game, you're very likely not gonna die. I could have gone for the Lethality build, but if I did that this game... Alright, Lee Sin gets the dragon here because it was pretty much impossible for me to outsmite him if he lands his Q smite on it. My team should have focused the Lee Sin down further instead of trying to hit the dragon more. But that's whatever. Um, yeah, here I just flash over the wall because Brand was out of position, kill him for free. But I'm going for not... Like, if I went for the Lethality build this game, what I was saying, uh, I would have actually been way too squishy to be able to tank for my team. For like... We would have had... A, a full team of squishies that would just instantly die. I right, cock my here. Like, this game, I was, like, 
kind of thinking this Kog'Maw might be scripting because of some of the moves he pulls. But I, in the end, I'm not really sure on that one. I'm, I, I don't like people like judging people instantly if to, to tell if they're scripting or not. But yeah, I right, killer blue buff here. I'm looking towards going mid lane. I walk over the ward so they spot me. Kog'Maw walks the wrong direction and instantly dies though, which is interesting. Now, 7 and 2 here. I have 2500 gold, so I'm most likely going to back here for something along the lines of... I'm pretty, with, I, I'm pretty sure I buy, like, Phantom Dancer with Mercur like, um, Mercury Threats here. I'm pretty sure. I, I can't remember what I exactly built, but that's what I would get here, I think. That's what I would get, like, looking at this. Now, Team Comp and stuff, that's what I just would buy. So I'm assuming that I do that. Let's speed it up a tiny bit. This takes uh, like ages to fucking clear. I'll leave my red up because I still have one for a little bit for a gank. And then I can pick that other one up later. I get the Nautilus for a turret dive. Rip. I'm pretty sure I pick up the top turret here as well. We're trying to out uh, speed clear them for the turret. So we pick up the first turret here instead of them picking up the first turret. But that's what's, that was the goal there. That's why I also didn't go to stop do red buff as well. Like, I could have done it because my red buff was running out, but I still had it, and I needed to be quick at clearing the first turret because bot had some problems. Speed is up. I was pretty sure his blue could be up here, so I went to check, and it actually was up, so I take that blue buff. I knew that Lee, uh, Lee Sin was going to be there soon, so I'm not going to go for the wolf camp. I was also pretty sure that was up, but because I knew, I was just going to back off. Take my red buff here and probably recall. I have 4,200 gold at this point. Let's see what I buy here. I'm pretty sure like Phantom Nets or Mercury Treads and then maybe like something of a Hex Drinker. Oh, straight up buy a Devs Do I straight up buy a... Oh, okay, that actually works. Straight up buying a Devs Dance there is not too bad. But, but yeah, see, I knew. I knew that was going to be something different. I bought a Maw with Mercury Treads. Looking at their team... Korkma does a lot of magic damage. Corky does a lot of magic damage. Nautilus does a lot of magic damage. Brand does a lot of magic damage. So I just buy double magic resist items in the form of Mercury Treads, which also reduces CC from Nautilus, Brand, the slow from Korkma, and then Corky's shit as well with his package slow. So Mercury Treads is very good here. And then I also pick up the Maw for the extra magic resist, which makes me pretty much unkillable to their entire team right now. So that's why I did that. I... Decided to not upgrade like the next buy is 100% gonna be the zeal upgrade into a phantom dancer here All right here. I just throw a random smoke screen to get the assist on the nautilus Like I didn't want to get take the kill from fiora, but I wanted to uh, get the assist Just throw a smoke screen on it for like 50 damage Again as you can see right here. I am I I'm like 60 cs up on at least in because I kept farming a lot and he didn't like, one of Graves' strengths is just to keep farming a lot to get your CS going. Like, he clears everything so fast. Alright, here, this dragon is pretty free for me. There's no real... Like, Velkos was zoning the Lee Sin perfectly with the ultimate, so I could pick up the dragon here. I sniped the brand with my ultimate there. And then I chased his Corky down. Like, look at this. Look at right here, this fight, here. Yeah? I'm fucking straight up face tanking this Corky. He exhausted me and everything, and I still survived, because there was just no way he could kill me with his build. I had a mod Mercury Treads, there was no chance he could actually kill me there. Would have been even worse for him if I had the Phantom Dancer. Here I see a Kogma. He flashes onto me, but like his... Like, wait, just go back there, like, just a second. This is what I mean. This is actually what I mean. Alright, let's speed it up a tiny bit to like one speed. And then slow it down as soon as I go on the Kogma. Alright, let's slow it down a tiny bit. Look at this Look at this guy's fucking mechanics, dude. Like, he fucking orb walked the shit out of me. Perfect auto attack space, like, auto attack spacing, whatever. He just played that fucking perfectly. That was one of the moments where I was like, this guy could definitely be scripting. That was way too perfect. But, yeah, I'm not sure on that Kogma. I'm still not sure. Like, some of his moves this game were very questionable. Alright, just, they're picking up the turret here, I think. And actually, they might miss this turret by, like, a tiny bit of HP. Yeah, they might, they miss it by a bit of HP. Alright, as you can see, the buy that I did. Wait, let me just see, go back to the buy that I did. Like, I have 2,250 gold, so I probably pick up the zeal here. Or the phantom dancer here, sorry. And then just buy into a death's dance, because I already have ma and just need some lifesteal. So at this point, I'm very tanky. I mean, I also have a lot of lifesteal, especially when my ma active kicks in on this, uh, on this build. 
still waiting for me to respawn here. Alright, back out. Like, look at this gold trap, by the way. Like, I'm, I have 10k. I'm at least, like, pretty much 2k up on the rest of the game. That's because I kept farming as well as just getting some kills around the map. I pretty much have the same farm as my AD carry, just because I kept farming. It's not necessarily that I took a lot of farm from lanes. It's just the fact that you can get a lot of farm from counter jungling and just speed clearing your jungle every time. So, yeah. Alright, I see that. I know that the blue is up, is, uh, up here. I see my team fighting down, uh, down there, which... I mean, nothing I could have really done about that one. So, just playing my own game here, trying to get some more farm, some more, like, gold for me. All right, I see this turret here. It's very low, so I just go towards it, auto attack at once, pick up a free turret. Then here, if I, if I fight my break out here. Let's see what happens. I'm not sure. All right, I use smoke screen there. I go in. Listen, like, I just straight up dive in because I knew I was very tanky and I saw the other people on the other sides of the map. So I just literally 2v1 them, pretty much. Let's just go back a tiny bit. Recap this a bit. Slow it down. Actually, speed it up. Slow it down here. So I, I knew that the Corky, I saw him on the ward, so he wasn't going to be close. Then I just dove in because I was pretty sure it was only Lee Sin and Brand there. I just go in. I missed my ultimate, sadly, but I hit the auto attack. Kill the Lee Sin, chase the Brand down because there was no way he's going to have enough damage to kill me. With my build, like the Ma and the Phantom Dancer with Lifesteal Mercury threats and everything. So yeah, and then Corky chases me down here. I was like, yeah, Corky, mate, you're not going to kill me, dude. Come on. I just straight up walk onto him. He flashes out. I got hit by the Nautilus here. They try to fucking kill me. But I have too much tankiness and too much lifesteal. Like my Ma active is on here as well. As you can see in the bar, the lifesteal active from Ma is on. That's the eye. So I get even more lifesteal up on my Vamp Scepter as well. Brent tries to hit me again. I have a lot of magic resist, so it doesn't matter. Like this tanky Graves build is insane. Try to chase the Brand here, get the auto attack on him, but it didn't work out. Then I was trying to get the smoke screen for maybe enough damage to kill him with the Red Smite, but it just barely didn't want to work out on that one. So here I just went to lifesteal because I still had the Maw active on this, so I pretty much lifesteal back to full HP in no time. I have Vamp Scepter with the Maw active. Now we look to get the bot turret here. I just clear that and let the other ones reset on the Gromp there. I didn't want to spend time killing the other ones. I just want to get the 70 gold from the big one. Uh, they engage onto me here again. But again, I'm just too tanky for them to kill me. They actually need their AD carry to kill me right now because I have way too much magic resist. Red buff is spawning here. I definitely want this red buff. Pick that up. Might look for another fight here. Brand is out of position, so I dive onto him and kill him. I snipe someone with the ultimate. Actually, wait. What did I just do there with my ultimate? Alright. This is where I shot my ultimate. Corky's out of position here. I'm assuming Fiora goes onto the Corky. He gets snared. I fire my ult to do a lot of damage to him. And Fiora crits him and kills him. Alright. That's what happened there with my ultimate. I have 2900 gold right now. So I'm most likely going to recall and get my death dance. I'm thinking. Recall here. And I pick up the Death's Dance. Yep. Yeah. And I sell my refillable potion for a long sword just to get some extra damage, I suppose. Building into maybe maybe a Lost Whisper this game. I think so. Actually, maybe not a Lost Whisper. I might be looking towards a Bloodthirster this game just because their team doesn't really have a tank. Sure, they have Nal Nautilus, right? No, don't get me wrong. That Nautilus is going to be very, uh, very annoying and very tanky, but... I feel like I was more of a threat to, of dying, so extra life steal would help me out more. Alright, wait. That was a fight. My bad. Alright, what happens here? Hide this. Alright, they walk over a ward here. I was clearing the ward. I see them here. Jin gets over. I just flash over, hit the brand with that Q, kill him. And chase this down. Like, I'm just straight, straight face tanking everything because it doesn't really matter. It's not like I'm gonna die. Like, this build is so insanely tanky. It is a very good build. Wait, uh, go back to Graves. I still have the Maw active on me right now. I might try to save it. No, I didn't. Alright, I'm just saying, like, we could Baron here, team. Probably. I was waiting for Fiora to deal with Kog'Maw. We, we'd probably duo this Baron because, like, I have a lot of lifesteal, but I'm pretty sure Fiora also has a lot of lifesteal. Yeah. Fiora was tanking it for as long as possible because uh, the one that's tanking, the Baron deals less damage to it. So... 
I will deal way more damage to it, and since I'm way more fat than her and I was critting it a lot, I was just bursting that Baron down as long as she was tanking. And then in the case she had to stop tanking, I could always still tank it because I have a lot of lifesteal. Pick up the dragon here. I have currently sitting on 1800 gold and 15k in total. What do I do here? I pick up a red pot with a BF sword. I just wanted to get some extra damage, I suppose. That's a pretty decent back. Like the, the BF sword here was the plan in going to a bloodthirster. Just for some more sustain in fights. Like the extra lifesteal from bloodthirster plus the shield. It's gonna also help me sustain. I shoot my ultimate on the Corky to deal some damage to it and Thresh kills him. I'm 14-3 and 10 here. Let's pause, right? Look at the gold values of this game at the moment. Like, I have 192 farm, which is pretty much more than their entire team. Because you have to take into account that all of this is jungle farm as well, which is worth like 70 gold on the main uh, units. So I'm definitely up in farm on their team. I'm pretty much also out farming my teammates, like pretty much everyone. Gold-wise, like... How much the farm is worth. So, like, just to kept... Like, the fact that I kept farming really just put me so far ahead. Plus, like, getting kills and getting kills. Like, I have 15.8k gold right here. And the highest after that is Fiora. With an 8 and 2 score and 233 farm with 13k. That's, like, at least 2.6k difference. Yeah, 2.6k difference. Something like that. That's massive. I'm so far ahead this game. Just because I kept farming and... Because I kept farming, I had the advantage in fights to be tanky enough with the build I went for. To just be able to get a seriously good score on Graves this game. As you can see the build is pretty much where the game is going to end, I think. So let's play it out. On one speed. I'm just going for turrets here. I'm just going to try to keep hitting these turrets. Maybe I dive onto the Skogmar. Like, I have a lot of life steal. I just, per auto attacker, heal like 200, and f 200 to 250 on the minions. I'm just gonna hit for Nexus here and pretty much end the game. I don't like dicking around too much on the Nexus, I just want to end the game. So I end the game there and we win with me being at 16.1k gold. Like, a solid amount on the enemy team. I have pretty much 6k on everyone on their team. And I have also a lot of gold on my team. Like, Fiora's like getting somewhere maybe, but I'm still like about like 2.5k ahead on her. And then, like, at least 3k on the rest of my team. 3 to 4k. So, that's why you keep farming. Like, farm is very important on a jungler like Graves. He does it very quickly. And it's very important because he's pretty much your AD carry type of champion. So, later in the game, if you have a lot of farming, if you're ahead, you're never gonna die. You're just gonna be a god in team fights. Alright. That's the victory screen. If you guys like this format, I tried it a little bit different this time. And this time, I actually knew how this worked. So if you like this, I could do it more often if you want in this way. So just like mention in the comments below or just hit that like button or something. I would very much like to know your opinion. And yeah, see you guys in the next video. Bye.